Good evening, everyone. I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're all very, very welcome. And what a treat do we have for you this evening. My name is Lauren McMullen. I am the Bushmills brand ambassador for Ireland. And this evening, I am going to be your host, your whiskey educator, generally just making sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible, keeping these two guys in check as well, uh, and just ensuring that you have the best and most immersive event possible. So of course, we are here this evening for our latest series of the Blackbush Stories events, and we're absolutely delighted to bring you the partnership with Established Coffee, Cafe and Roastery. Um, whiskey and coffee, can't think of a better combination. Um, they are two liquids which have an incredible craft where we can find a lot of synergies between them as well. Um, and they're two liquids that have such a, an interesting and fascinating history that are very, very intertwined. So uh, it's a great event that we have lined up for you. This is probably my favorite yet as well. Um, so I'm really excited to bring it to you. It's also International Irish Whiskey Day as well. Uh, so we're just giving you all the goods, all the goods this evening, basically. Um, so folks, just before we go any further, a um, little bit of housekeeping, not too much. You're well used to this by now. Um, just the usual things to make sure you have a most uh, enjoyable event as possible. The one thing I will mention to you, you can see I have an iPad here. I can actually see questions come in. Um, so please, if you do have any questions, don't be shy. Uh, use the Zoom chat feature. You can ask uh, either any of us any questions throughout the event. I can see them on my screen, so if I find there's a relevant one to the part of the event, I will pick it out and we can chat through that as well. As always, please do join in on the, the conversations on social. Uh, we love to see all your feedback, all your kits, your cocktails, um, so please do uh, share them and tag us. Our handle is at Bushmills IRL and the hashtag is Blackbush Story. So we'll have a good look at those after the event, which is great. Um, now, I don't think I can go any further without acknowledging these two wonderful people either side of me. Um, I am absolutely delighted to be joined tonight by co-founder of Established, Mark Ashbridge. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Mark. How are you uh, doing? Yeah, great. Pulling Pleasure that well. To be here. Yeah, good. Ready to wet the whistle with some whiskey and coffee. Yep. <laughs> Such a great event we have lined up, folks. And I'm delighted to also be joined by Seamus Oak. Uh, he is one of Ireland's most uh, recognised and influential bartenders. We were supposed to have um, Chris Parr with us this evening. Some of you may know him. He's another fantastic bartender in Belfast. Bless him though, he is ill. So Seamus Oak has done us a massive favour by stepping in for us this evening. So we really appreciate that. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here. Happy to be here. Brilliant. <laughs> um, so how the event is going to take shape tonight, everyone. We will begin uh, by having a chat with Mark, um, kind of learning a little bit more about Established um, and obviously his journey in, to, in his career and to where he is today. Uh, we will then taste the coffee and whiskey, of course, uh, best part of the event. Um, so we're going to be tasting both of them. We will kind of taste them, compare them, contrast them a little bit as well. Um, so I will encourage you to leave a little bit of liquid in your glasses so you can do that. Um, and then, of course, we will finish up by uh, Seamus Oog making us some fantastic whiskey cocktails, whiskey and coffee cocktails, really showcasing um, the versatility of both liquids and how well they marry together. So it's, uh, I'm so excited for this and I cannot wait to get started. Now, before we dive in, Hopefully you should have all received your tasting kits for the event uh, this evening. Um, those kits will contain the majority of the ingredients and the equipment that you need to join us. Um, so you will also need to grab a few extras. Um, we will give you a minute to do that, so don't worry. Um, however, what I'll do first of all is talk you through the kits. Um, I think we can all agree that they look absolutely fantastic. So the first thing that you should have, you should have three miniature bottles of Black Bush. Hopefully they haven't been cracked open just yet. I know it's very tempting. Um, one of those you will need for my tasting. I will, of course, guide you through Black Bush, which has been the inspiration for the coffee blend. The other two will be used for your cocktails, so you can get those out, put them aside and get them ready. You will also have three Bushmills Rocks glasses as well. Again, one is for the tasting, two are for the cocktails. You will also have um, a few ingredients for the cocktails in there as well. But then we have the star of the show, which is a sachet, a bag there of the limited edition Blackbush Coffee Blend. Um, this has been created especially for the event. Um, so you're, you're very lucky and very privileged to, to have a bag of that uh, in your houses this evening, which is brilliant. It is enough, I believe, to make one litre of coffee. You can keep me right, Mark. Yep. So we'll have enough for the tasting for the cocktails and some leftover tomorrow morning uh, in case you need it to wake you up. <laughs> um, the other things you will need to grab, folks, are 
Um, you will need to get your French press ready, have your kettle um, on hand as well, ready to boil. You will also, of course, need a mug to drink your coffee from. You'll need to grab an orange and a knife as well. Also some ice, which of course we'll need for the cocktails. Um, the coffee will be well cooled down by that stage, however, so don't worry too much about that. You will also need um, a jigger or some form of measuring jug. If you don't have a jigger, that will do absolutely fine. You'll also need a cocktail shaker. Again, if you don't have that, don't worry. A protein shaker or a clean jar with a lid will do absolutely fine. And then you'll also need a strainer or a sieve. So what we're going to do is we'll give you a couple of minutes uh, to grab those pieces if you haven't already. When you come back, Seamus Oog won't be with us. He has a little bit of prep to do for the cocktails later on. So we're going to let him go and do that. And we'll welcome you back in just a minute, guys. Okay. Welcome back everyone. Hopefully you have everything you need to join us by this stage. Now, I know some of you have certainly been to our series of Blackbush Stories events before. Um, I had a lot of familiar faces uh, messaging me. Um, the, the response to the tickets was absolutely unbelievable. We were completely blown away by it. So I know some of you, um, I've actually met some of you at Blackbush Stories events before, which is brilliant. Um, so you'll know that this is a series of events that Bushmills has been running for quite a few years now. And the main aim of the Blackbush Stories series is really to celebrate local Irish talent. It's to kind of seek out individuals with a unique craft or passion, um, and certainly one that we can find synergies between that and our craft of producing whiskey at the Old Bush Mills Distillery. Uh, at the Old Bush Mills Distillery, we have over 400 years uh, of perfecting that craft, that um, craftsmanship, the art of producing whiskey, and it's one that we're incredibly passionate about. So we really like to seek out individuals who are also incredibly passionate about their talent, and also seeking people who kind of go against the grain a little bit as well, and kind of look outside the box, um, especially when they're operating in their field as well. I am absolutely delighted um, with this partnership between Bush Mills and Established Coffee. Um, for those of you who aren't from Belfast or who haven't had the pleasure of having a good cup of coffee or a cinnamon swirl yeah. uh, in, in Established, it is situated here in Belfast. Um, it is based in the Cathedral Quarter, um, one of the most beautiful, most bustling areas of the city. Um, so please do, if you get a chance, if you haven't already, go and grab a coffee. Um, now, Mark Ashbridge, he co-founded Established with Virgin. Shout out to her as well. Yep, She's holding absolutely. the fort in the background, the other co-founder, um, back in 2014. And Established was one of, if not the first, uh, independent speciality coffee roasters in the north. Um, you've also opened your own roastery, Mark, which we'll chat about in a second. And you've really just gone from strength to strength there as well. Um, so, Mark... Thank you so much yeah. for, for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure to have you with us. Um, before we go any further, should we brew the coffee? Yeah, I think yeah. that's uh, <laughs> the best thing we can do is, is get on with the brewing. Um, we've already discussed the pack here. Um, you've got twice as much coffee as you need for tonight's event. So that's perfect amount to do the same brew again tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to use 30 grams of coffee uh, when we're brewing a French press. Um, I should say, if you're at home and you don't have a French press, and you have a different way that you normally make coffee. There's the wonderful thing about coffee that we all create our own habits and rituals and uh, our own individual approaches to how we enjoy coffee. Um, so this isn't prescriptive. We're just trying to make a, a great cup of coffee to be able to share a, a, amongst uh, each other um, and in a way that we thought more, most people have a French press in at home. So if you want to brew along with me, that's great. If you have any other brew method or anything else, crack on with brewing the coffee 
um, and you can uh, just, we're going to let it cool for the, for the meantime. So we've got 30 grams of coffee. If you don't have a set of scales like me, because I just nerd out over all <laughs> these things, um, it is roughly two really heaped dessert spoonfuls, or if you can just eyeball half the packet, um, that's kind of perfect. So we've got a 30 grams of coffee, and we're just going to put that straight into the French press. And today we're just trying to have a simple uh, recipe and process as possible. So basically what I've got is a half a liter of water, 500 grams of water. Um, and I'm just gonna add that straight in quite aggressively uh, just to try and make sure everything's being saturated. And up we go to 500. Oh, the smell already. Beautiful, it's just encapsulating the whole room over here. <laughs> and what we're gonna do then is we're gonna just give quite an aggressive stir um, so here, we're just going to try and make sure everything has been saturated. And what's going to happen is we're not really going to interact much with this at all. If in around three, four minutes time, you see that there's quite a crust of coffee on top of your French press, just give that one last stir at about the four minute mark. Um, just with the temperature of the room here being a little bit cooler, that's not going to happen for us. Uh, but what I'm basically going to do at, the, at this point is just set a lid on to keep a little bit of the heat in there for the brewing process. But otherwise, we are literally not going to do anything else to this French press. I'm just going to set this so it's just touching the top. And we're never even going to plunge this French press. So that is what makes this recipe and this approach a little bit different. Um, and really all that is is that we're just going to use it as a strainer towards the end. We just don't want to press everything and get all the coffee mixed up again later on in the brew over the next uh, sort of few minutes as we're talking and everything else, all the coffee's gonna settle down at the bottom and we're just gonna try and keep it there when we pour to taste and then have enough to make our cocktails afterwards. So that is brewing the coffee. That sounds good. Yeah, the smell is absolutely incredible. So that will be pretty much at a perfect temperature when we go to taste it. And also it'll have cooled down really nicely for your cocktails as well. So um, that's got a perfect time to sit there for the next few minutes, yep. Mark. Um, now, from, from grain to glass and from bean to mug, the, the artisan coffee roaster and the master blender in whiskey production, they really are kindred spirits. Um, it's such a, a craft and an art, and we, I think we've actually surprised ourselves with how many similarities there really are. Uh, but sure. before we get into that, Mark, um, where did your love of coffee start? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the, my interest in coffee is kind of a little bit omnipresent in my life. Um, my parents always drank freshly brewed coffee at home. Um, my childhood is memories are filled with waking up in the morning to the sound of a of a wall mounted hand cranked coffee grinder uh, kind of reverberating around the house um, and then getting downstairs and getting hit with those smells and they you know as you get a bit older asking oh well can I make a coffee today or can I <laughs> can I use the grinder so um, that wasn't maybe the norm for most people a lot of people reach for an instant coffee or whatever but I just it's the only coffee I've ever known is is real coffee and yep. the smell always interested me and. Um, you know, as it then got later in life where I would um, maybe lean on caffeine uh, for exam studies and so on, where I started to drink it for myself. It was black filter coffee. That's what I loved. That's what I uh, knew coffee as and yeah. sort of almost in its purest form in, in some ways. Um, and that was just, yeah, a real inspiration, a real, yeah, just connection between my parents and my family home and, um, yeah, my mom and dad influencing me whether they knew it or not. I love that. I love that you mentioned kind of the smells and how that reminds you of being at home because a lot of people um, kind of when I do, you know, education on bush mills and our, our range of whiskey, it's always black bush that they tell me that reminds them of Christmas, maybe at their parents' house because their mum maybe put it in, in a, a Christmas cake or yeah. people will say, oh, my granddad always had a bottle of, you know, black bush in the house. It's almost like a nostalgic link and a yeah. tie to, to the whiskey and for you the coffee which is lovely. Um, how did you actually begin your career then work into the, the coffee industry? Yeah so I mean I did work in the coffee shop for a while kind of post school um, but had then kind of went into a, an office nine to five job um, but I, my love for coffee uh, never really waned during that time and, and I just use it as a bit of a hobby um, so obviously you're brewing it every single day and I just kept looking at different brew methods and different filter, filtration methods and then looking into the difference of the different coffees and uh, more and more roasteries and coffee uh, places were popping up. Then there was forums online where you were kind of just yep. sharing recipe ideas and the idea of getting skills out and repeatedly doing things and just fell down a rabbit hole with it. <laughs> it just naturally kind of happened. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's almost one of those things that you don't really feel like I didn't really have to overly make a yep. conscious effort for it, but I was always maybe just chasing that perfect cup um, in some ways and it always just interested me like 
oh, why did it taste so great yesterday compared to today? And, you know, what was the different? Yeah, yeah. What, what was the difference with that bag of beans and this bag of beans mm. and this origin and that origin? So um, that was always just something we did at home and both Bridget and I really enjoyed it. Um, but as I say, I was just in a nine to five job and it was just a hobby. I, I did bring coffee into work. I was this weird guy with a <laughs> hand grinder in work because I was that pedantic about it. Um, so I was always known in the office as the coffee guy. Um, so it was no big surprise when I said, okay, I'm gonna try and open a coffee shop. And I guess many people maybe even made that encouragement at the time. Um, so for both Bridget and I, we kind of had a passion for that. Uh, we had a passion for serving people. Um, we've always been quite sociable and enjoyed going out. And there was probably a bit of frustration, um, you know, that we were probably making a better cup of coffee at home than what we could get out and about. Um, so we really wanted to bring about that change and bring specialty coffee was really kind of starting to rise in London and even Dublin. Yeah. Um, and we kind of felt like, you know, we could really bring that and add our own uh, yeah, bring something to the table. To yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's absolutely nothing wrong with like in good quality coffee, like go out to whiskey. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you said it, you mentioned kind of your, you know, your nine to five job and your, your career um, to leave a nine to five job to pursue a passion mm. while fantastic that must have been quite scary i imagine yeah uh, uh, it, like again in all honesty we i don't think it, if we had a really thought it through uh yeah it might not have ever happened um <laughs> so i think maybe being a bit like bit blissfully ignorant um but really just being driven by a, a work ethic where i'll work whatever we need to do to make it work and and if it really doesn't i'll work two jobs to try and uh, pay off what the, the debt that we've just got ourselves into um really when we look back, we were not in a place to have kind of taken on what we did, but um, but we're glad that we ha that we have, and we're glad of the success that um, has been made from that, um, and to have been able to gradually grow the business um, throughout that time. Like I, I remember a customer a few months in, like you know, just someone that I only knew from walking in mm -hmm. as a customer, and they said to me like, "Wow, how did you know like to do that? Like, how did you know to take such a risk?" And that probably was the first time that that question really hit home to me at the time, and I went. Oh, I don't know. Actually, yeah, <laughs> this I? is really, really stupid. So, but you know, uh, thankfully things have worked out, and um, you know, we built a, a great business and had a great team of people around us to, to be able to do so. Built that absolutely, yeah. Because you kind of you know mentioned before about community. You've kind of just mentioned mm -hmm. it with you know with that. Um, that's one of your ethos, wasn't it? Kind of just to appeal yeah. to not just kind of one demographic. You yeah. know, it's kind of an, a nice good collective mix of people. I think that's it. Like I think as you had seen, sort of specialty coffee scene popping up in places like London and Dublin and big thing in Melbourne and mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, all these places and you just think, okay, well, they have a certain demographic of people yeah. and, you know, you got labeled at the time, the hipster term was, yep. was really thrown about a lot and uh, for us, it was never about that, you know, it was about great coffees for everyone um, and, you know, we really did, we really have always just felt that, that um, if we can bring great coffee uh, to people and serve it in a down to earth and honest and open way, then um, yeah, I guess that maybe felt like less of a risk in that you just think, well, who doesn't like nice things? Exactly. Um, and that was kind of the hope. Absolutely. Have you had kind of a, a pinch me moment? That you yeah, can really I mean, highlight? I think, yeah, like for us, like there's there's been a lot like getting through this experience, getting the roastery up and running in the last few years and, and having our own coffee uh, in people's homes and, and on the shelves in the cafe. but. Um, really kind of big moments kind of hit early on when uh, or a time when Bridge and I were behind the bar in the in the cafe and kind of looked at each other and looked out and it was a nice busy cafe and you think great but the most amazing thing about it was you know that there was everyone from you know a toddler to an 80 year old um, you know a pair of brothers that would come in often for coffee and sit and read the paper and a student over here, two business people over here, and mom and a toddler over here, and you just think, like, that's amazing. They're all coming together over great coffee and uh, and everything in between. Um, but we've been been able to deliver that with fantastic service, yeah. um, because that's what it takes. Like, it's not just great coffee on its own. It has to be served really well and by passionate people. Um, so I think you know that was always a big thing of like, okay, you know, we feel like that is working and. That was probably infectious for the team, and um, and you know many customers just wanted to be part of that, which was 
it was amazing. Exactly. I've just noticed, Mark, a question's come in here. Um, uh, can the coffee be bought after the event? So the, the limited edition release? Yeah, so we are going to put it on sale. Uh, in fact, it should be on sale on our website, established.coffee now. Uh, very limited release uh, over the next day or so. Uh, we're going to be roasting further batches on Monday, so we will put more bags for sale uh, tomorrow evening. Um, so if you miss out on uh, the smaller amount that's available tonight, uh, do not worry, it will be available again over the weekend. Um, but do be quick about it if you want to get, get a buy because it is quite uh, limited. Um, what we've also been able to do is for everyone that's attending the event, um, there is a discount code uh, that is Bushmills15. Uh, and if you put that in at checkout, you will get 15% off um, your the coffee that you're purchasing. Brilliant. We'll also remind you about that tomorrow as well, folks, but we'll touch upon that later on. Um, do you have, Mark, kind of any future ambitions for Establish? Anything that you can tell us? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, our, our ambition is just to continue to grow, especially the roastery side mm -hmm. of things. Uh, I've been working with some amazing cafes and uh, partners in, on the wholesale side of things. Um, but really, you know, our big focus is to really grow uh, the retail side of our business in terms of, of getting bags of coffee into people's homes. Uh, one of the, the leading things that became apparent to us was that we could ruin people for bad coffee. Uh, <laughs> so once you've had really great coffee, it's a bit like if, once you've had really great whiskey, you don't go backwards. You don't go back, yeah. um, You know, so that was always the thing that we tried to push, um, and we've always sold a lot of bags of people to take home with them. So not just about going into a cafe and having a great experience there, but getting better at brewing coffee at home and really enjoying it there. So we want to be in as many people's homes as we possibly can. That's a great aim. I love that. Um, before we kind of wet everyone's whistles, yep. uh, what did you think, Mark, when, when Bushmills approached you about this? What did you kind of think of the, the collaboration? Yeah. I mean, really, it did just feel like a really great challenge. Um, we'll, I have so much respect for Bushmills, and it's amazing to have such a, an amazing distillery that feels very much close to home and on your doorstep. Um, uh, Black Bush is a whiskey that I'm more than happy to have on my shelf at all times mm -hmm. at home. Um, I just think it's an amazing, great value go-to whiskey. Um, uh, as much as I enjoy geeking out over the single malts and everything else as well. Um, so when, when they kind of approached it, just thought, you know what, this is a bit out of the normal day-to-day -day, um, and it would be quite a challenge. And yeah, we just kind of jumped at the chance to kind of to kind of do that as uh, the roastery team all thought, okay, great, why we'll some new to tackle and exciting and uh, see what we can learn from it. Love that. Well, thank you, Mark. It's brilliant yeah. what you've achieved. And by the way, if you haven't, well, if you have been to establish or if you haven't, please grab a cinnamon swirl. Do yourselves a favour and grab one. They're unbelievable. <laughs> Personal favourite of mine. Um, Mark, thank you so much. Obviously, we'll be kind of going back to you a little bit later on when we taste yep. the coffee. Before we dive into a tasting of the coffee, um, as I said, I think we'll wet the whistle. I can feel a lot of uh, eyes burning through the camera at me that we haven't got a drink in our hands just yet. So that's exactly what we're about to do. Um, we're going to taste Blackbush. Um, so we're going to remind ourselves of the, obviously, the inspiration behind the Blackbush blend. We're also going to bring Seamus Oak back, and he's more than welcome because he is carrying three glasses of Blackbush. We're never going to turn anybody away who is carrying glasses towards us filled with whiskey. Thank you. There you go, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. I will also, as well, folks, um, keep an eye on questions here, just as we're kind of tasting the whiskey and things like that. So if you see me look down, that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, welcome back. How are you? <laughs> um, so what we're going to do, folks, as I said, we're going to dive into Blackbush. Um, as I said, this, this has been the whiskey. Of course, that is the inspiration behind not only the, the series of events, but um, this, this limited edition uh, coffee blend. I mean, where do we start with Blackbush? It is such an iconic whiskey. You've already mentioned it, Mark. It's uh, firmly on your shelf in your house yep. as well. It's a go-to. It's definitely a go-to whiskey for you. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I know that very well. Um, it's just such a whiskey with such a, a wonderful... I, I almost call, call it a whiskey of the people, or almost a nostalgic whiskey. There's so many reasons why Blackbush has a very firm place in people's hearts. Um, one of them is, well, the, the kind of first mention of Blackbush, we can trace back to about 1898, but the predecessor was actually known as Bushmills Special Bold Liqueur. Now, in the kind of 1800s, early 1900s, um, a lot of people, especially around the Bushmills area, of course, where the old Bushmills distillery is located, a lot of people, would the bar call would have been the colour of the label when they were asking for a whiskey. So a lot of people would have just referred to this as Black Label or Black Bush. 
So on the 18th of March 1975, Blackbush was trademarked to Bushmills and then the name changed shortly after that as well. So mm -hmm. essentially the people named the whiskey, as I said, which is one of the many reasons it has such a, a firm place in people's hearts. Blackbush is also my all-time go-to whiskey. It is such a versatile blend. Um, it is just equally as at home neat in a glass as it is in cocktails, uh, which you, have, you will of course see a little bit later on. Now, Blackbush is uh, such an iconic whiskey. Um, it's the most unique blended whiskey that you, you'll find uh, on the market. And that's mainly down to its unusually and uniquely high proportion of malt whiskey. Blackbush contains 80% malt whiskey. Of course, the triple distilled single malt whiskey that we produce at the old Bush Mills distillery, what we call the Bush Mills DNA. That is renowned, that character of spirit is renowned for its fruitiness, its floral note, and that's also very much reflected in the whiskey. So 80% of that malt spirit and 20% of a green spirit. Now, Blackbush is aged for a minimum of eight years, predominantly in ex Spanish Oloroso sherry casks. Now, we also use a small proportion of bourbon casks in there as well, which Mark will chat a little bit later on on how he created the, the coffee blend. But that high proportion of sherry casks, um, they are sourced from the Antonio Paez Bodega in Jerez in the south of Spain, the region of Andalusia. Um, a couple of people at the distillery actually go out there, hand select those sherry casks each year. So we know each and every time we're getting the best quality cask possible to age our whiskey. Now the flavor profile of a sherry cask and what that uh, imparts to the whiskey, you're going to get beautiful hints of dark fruits in there, um, sherry sweetness of course and a little bit of nuttiness it's absolutely beautiful so what we'll do is we'll have a little smell we'll have a little nose first of all mark again will talk you through this when we're tasting the coffee it's very very similar how you taste whiskey and coffee you really just let the whiskey draw you in initially let it pull you into the glass even if you move it away from your nose bring it back each time you return you'll find something different you kind of dive deeper into the whiskey and unravel more of the layers of that flavor you kind of peel it back each and every time. You guys, you can tell me what you're finding. Me personally, with Blackbush, it's just Christmas in a bottle. Yep. It's those beautiful kind of dried fruit notes, the raisins, and then when, when I kind of move the glass away, bring it back, that's when the plums come through. So that beautiful kind of hint of plum in there. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm really getting really... You just look like you're yeah, so happy. Nice <laughs> almond and marzipan kind of thing in there, yeah. uh, along with those dried fruits. Definitely the Christmas Exactly. A little bit of cinnamon I, as well. I yeah. always find a little bit of fig in there, which again yeah. ties in with the whole Christmas Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Figs, raisins, almonds, spot on, guys. And then the best part, we have a little sip. Cheers, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every hope you're all joining us at home. The sound of happiness, or the sound <laughs> of silence, actually, I should say. I mean, Blackbush has that beautiful kind of satin, almost creamy mouthfeel. As I draw mo more air into my palate, the heat, kind of that soft, gentle spice, just sits right at the back of your throat. It's not overpowering at all. As again, as I draw more air, the nuttiness certainly comes through, first of all. And you do almost get that kind of that, you really get the malted barley coming in there as well. Of course, it is just the spirit is produced 100% from Irish malted barley, so it's certainly reflected in there. And then on the finish, that beautiful burst of sherry sweetness, which just lingers and it just rolls and rolls on your palate and on your tongue. Can you tell it's my favourite? Uh, I don't, don't, think, don't think that's obvious, can you? I, I don't <laughs> think you're alone there. Like it, it's, it's just as good every time you drink it. Um, and for somebody who, who works with whiskey quite a lot, um, between be it a neat whiskey, using a cocktail, even like a highball in between. Yep. It's something that's accessible for, for all three, works in all three. Um, Absolutely. But it's still just as nice every time you just try it by itself. It still has the same elements going. Absolutely. That's so true. You know, it is, it's a, it's a neat whiskey drinker's yep. drink, but it's also people who love cocktails and love the kind of versatility of the blend. Absolutely. It's just, just a winner. It really is all around. Um, so hopefully you all enjoyed that. Everyone, cheers. We're going to sip away on this whiskey for the next couple of minutes. Um, Mark, I'm going to hand back to you now, mm -hmm. because what we'll also do, folks, hopefully you've done this. I know <coughs> you have plenty left, hopefully, uh, in your little your little kits. Do keep a little bit of whiskey in your glass. Um, it's really nice to kind of go between the whiskey and the coffee. And you will really, really see where Mark kind of took his inspiration from. Um, 
to create the, the Black Bush Coffee blend. So Mark, you're going to pour us some coffee. So I've just left a little bit in my glass here. Um, I imagine, Mark, you had to drink a few glasses of Black Bush to kind of familiarise yourself with it. it. It had to be done. Had to be know. done. Someone's uh, got to do it. Someone's <laughs> got to do it. It was, it was a hard job. but Someone's uh, got to do it. Um, how, Mark, did your kind of you know, research into Black Bush inspire this coffee blend a little bit further? Well, really, for us, it was a case of uh, understanding the the makeup of Blackbush and obviously understanding that the sherry casks are such a big part of that and, um, you know, just that you have a great barley at, at, the, at the, the front yep. and centre that creates those malts. Um, and for us, it was a case of, you know, there's obviously, we could have used, picked any coffee from around the world uh, to kind of go into the cask. We could have went with an option of having a couple of different origins yep. put together. Uh, but what we decided to do, because we understood about the sherry cask and that little bit of bourbon cask, was to get one of uh, bourbon barrels, was to get one of each of those, um, and we basically created a blend using the same coffee, uh, but put into the sherry cask and the bourbon barrel, and then blending those two together. Um, so the coffee that we're drinking today is uh, from Brazil. Um, it's called De Terra Pearl. Um, Brazil. It's a wonderfully processed uh, Brazilian coffee really high quality uh, coffee. But Brazilian, uh, sorry, w why we selected this coffee even before Bushmills um, and why we selected for this is just that it has this beautiful, chocolatey, nutty, um, really nice approachability to it. Um, it is not a crazy complex, not a f fruity, floral coffee. Um, it doesn't have any kind of weird things going on with it as we will have with some of our other coffees that we do. Um, as you start to explore it, but this is your your everyday drinker, your session coffee, your coffee coffee, as we would often call them. It's it's not challenging, it's not crazy, it's not out there. It is just it does exactly what it says in the tin for a really well processed Brazilian coffee of chocolatey, nutty, um, really round, really approachable. Um, so we thought that you know to take something like that to really un then understand have that as the backbone to then understand what the cask and the bar the barrel uh, could add to it uh, would be a great experiment and, uh, and a great way forward. Absolutely. Will we, will we have a taste and we'll pass, it, pass it down? So it's actually quite similar. There we go. Yeah. It's actually quite similar, Mark. You know, you were, we were chatting earlier, of course. Um, you do kind of really let the coffee kind of draw you into yep. a mug. You need those you? olfactory senses going. So it's about getting the nose right in there. And a lot of times for me with coffee like this as brewed, you know, you do get those malty notes. Uh, but a little bit of that sort of oh cinnamon toast, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, malt loaf yeah. kind of idea um, coming in. And then when we're tasting coffee, we're just going to be a little bit noisier and a little bit ruder. <laughs> and this is the time you're always told not to slurp. We encourage slurping. Uh, so do slurp away and, uh, yeah, get it going all around Love your mouth. Let's do that. It's worse since we have microphones, I guess. Yeah. It's, pr it's probably sorry a lot of apologies, everyone. Sorry but about that. It is encouraged. <laughs> Absolutely. Stay straight and away. there, straight away, I think what what we really got from the sherry cask and the bourbon barrel was uh, just really kind of bringing a, almost like a syrupy sweetness yeah. um, that I get a lot in uh, the Bush Mills as well. Um, and it's sort of slightly more fruitier notes coming in there. So those fruity notes, like they just aren't there in this coffee uh, in its you know most uh, raw form. Um, it is just it, you know. So we got kind of slight notes of a little plum. Apple. Again, we were looking for a more nuanced approach. We didn't want this to taste like you had just poured whiskey in, yeah, because we could have done that anyway. Um, it was more just trying to be a bit more balanced and just get, you know, just little elbow bumps, little shoulders of uh, those little flavors coming in there. A little hint of booziness. Um, that's not, it. Yeah, just yeah, a tiny yeah. bit of booziness. So, and we definitely got the from the bourbon barrel just that little bit of more of a vanilla kind of note coming in there. Um, you know, it almost verges into sort of a, a say oaky. Uh, part of it, but that's why it was a smaller yeah. component of the blend. Uh, the sherry cast does all the work and carries all the, the fruity notes, um, those kind of say more autumnal kind of things that um, as we, you know, sit in this weird weather pattern of uh, feeling like it might be spring, but it's kind of feels autumnal. It's like a little so bit of temptation it, to go exactly. towards that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, obviously we'd love to hear comments as well. Please put them in the chat, guys, and we can see it. I can see it on here. Um, the plums, just straight away, is the first thing I get. But you mentioned something really interesting earlier I about did. the biscuit. I did. So, <laughs> and like you know, I, I, earlier on, I almost felt nearly stupid simplifying it as much. But uh, looking back, one of the first whiskey tastings I did, 
Um, somebody always said, look, you know what, if you get an association of something you've always tasted all your life, that flavour, say it. There's not no wrong yeah. stupid answer. Everybody's yep. palate's different. Um, what I really get straight up the bat, even from the nose almost there, is like a dark chocolate digestive. Yep. And you know, it's, it stands I think it's, it's think exactly what, what this coffee brings to the table. Um, and as I say then, that kind of, you know, a nice cleaner sort of finish um, and that syrupy body that is uh, that time in the barrels that, that, that is really lending yeah. that to it. Like I get that right at the front. And again, I know you're saying like the baseline of the, the bean had the chocolate note and then obviously the, you've got the malt come from Bush Mill yeah. and that imparting this flavour. And that sort of similar to the whiskey, it falls away more to that sort of sweetness coming yeah. from the cherry cask. And you sort of pick apart your apple and your plums and your and your ripe mm -hmm. fruits, but chocolate digestive alongside that, if anybody has one, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'll forage in the cupboards and we'll see. There's a great question, it's just come in there, Mark. Um, for those of us with a sweeter tooth, what sugar would you recommend with your coffee? Okay. Uh, <laughs> whichever one you know we put in. Again, like I think this, this is the thing, uh, you know, as I, uh, I don't know, yeah, you, we could definitely be looked at as being a purist or, or whatever it is, but like I have, zero judgment on what anyone does with their coffee yeah. um you know the I, I would say for this that sort of brown sugar would probably be you know just keeping that deeper sweetness and whatever else um again i would probably lean on maybe try it with a little bit less again we would always try and say to someone try it without first and then exactly you know, like add it in yeah. um i think sometimes you can be surprised if you've been used to a different kind of coffee that has a much more higher bitterness um, like this for me this coffee is just really smooth um, really quite mellow the bitterness is reasonably low um, the acidity is is very much low um, so you know it has an inherent sweetness in and of itself that we would always encourage try it without but then yeah first. I would say yeah. yeah probably just that little bit of brown sugar is probably gonna be yeah. the, the way to go I like that now I've actually got a question for you that that, yeah. that lovely person on there has just prompted I love iced coffee. Like yeah. I am that person who will drink iced coffee in winter. 100%. That is me. What would you do with, with this? Would you would you need any syrup with it, or would you literally yeah. just have it? Yeah, uh, we generally find with iced coffee that does tend to we would use a little bit of simple syrup, yeah. uh, just a yeah. demerara one to one kind of thing, and just again just a little bit just to kind of because uh, the cold kind of thing can just reduce that sweetness um, as soon as you kind of. Yeah, add the ice and whatever else. It's a bit if you've ever tasted a warm can of Coke versus a yes, an ice cold can of Coke. Um, so just because it takes a little bit of the sweetness out, being the temperature, just a tiny bit of uh, simple syrup in there just really rounds the whole thing out and just makes it. Simple, really simple demerara syrup is the key to everything. It really yeah. is, isn't when it? When it comes to whiskey and coffee, like I mean, you make an old fashioned house by using demerara as opposed to, to white sugar, you get such a difference. Yeah. Um, it, it lends itself both to whiskey and coffee so well, which again, I suppose, brings in the comparisons again between the two and whiteness. Yeah, exactly. Is all yeah. I love that. Someone's just, there's a comment that's come in from someone, a uh, tasting note, uh, all spice and pepper of the coffee. Yeah. Again, like, there you, you are, know, really like kind of we're looking at some of those kind of spicy. Yeah. Spicier the notes undertones more yeah, so. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. Um, and again, we can go kind of completely off the wall at time with our, with our flavour notes. And some of are just like, it, and I'm like, as long as you enjoy the coffee, that is the main thing. You know? Yes, exactly. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's our job as people who, it, when you stop and you are going to taste, you, like really start trying to fig, fire those uh, memories. Because it is all linked to memories. You know, you're exactly. going, boom, chug it to the it, <laughs> it took you somewhere and it took you to that. And, um yeah we i get that all the time um yeah yeah i also am like that with whiskey sometimes as well like you know when you get really specific but it's because yep. it genuinely does trigger that memory yep. um one of our whiskeys actually i'm sure some of you will know it very well the 16 year old malt the nose is like wine gums you know like a, like a black wine gum right Amazing. i get it every single time and it's so funny because it just it just reminds me so much of them um mark just, just back kind of back to the coffee were there any challenges that you encountered yeah. So I think that was the big thing for us was when you come to a challenge like this, you've got lots of different approaches that can be taken, and lots of different variables at play. Um, and you know, for us, it was everything from you know, when you start out, are you going to start with putting the green coffee into the barrel or are you going to put the roasted coffee into the barrel? Um, what are the different ways of doing that? There are lots of different ways of, of getting that. Are we going to go with this is going to permeate the room and smell like a whiskey when it's when people have it or do we want to go with that more nuanced approach and we definitely wanted that more nuanced approach uh, we were lucky enough to be able to lean on uh, some other people's within the industry's um, experiments and 
uh, research that they had already done. Um, so we're speaking to uh, some friends and in, in, uh, our colleagues within uh, in the US that had one that they'd worked with, uh, particularly like kind of rehydrating coffee and dehydrating again because the sherry cask that we had had a little bit of whiskey left in it. Uh, so we got to what enjoy some <laughs> whiskey. Uh, because that barrel was wet, you know, immediately it was, we were hit with, okay, there's a decision. Do yeah. we put the, with the coffee in straight away like that? And to be fair, we did try that with a very small yeah. amount of coffee and, and over a very short time, but it just overhydrated the coffee. It just became a real problem to roast. Uh, it was going to be very prone to staling and just flavors that it would it would have just tasted like you soak coffee and whiskey yeah in. you kind of want um, it more of kind of the subtle influence of yeah whiskey rather so than over, yeah. uh that's where we land them into okay let's make sure the cat the barrel is dried out and mm -hmm. um, we were monitoring the moisture content of that uh again kind of lent on people that we had seen that had released their coffee of in a similar sort of ilk um and uh just so we could speed up the process and not have to make all of the mistakes yeah uh, so it's wonderful to be able to do that um and then yeah it just started then a, a, a case of experimenting with okay we got the right coffee for it into the barrels from there it was a case of how many days is it going to be in the barrel for um and so we just were literally just kind of taking out little samples and testing it uh day five day six day seven day eight and where we have landed was day eight um mm -hmm. was where we kind of felt like great we're teetering into that there's a little bit of the booze coming in but it's just doing enough where yeah. it, it when you've tasted this coffee as a you know w without it having been in a barrel and when you taste it with it you know it is night and day uh with the difference and and again still in a very nuanced way um you know that's where we were just we just want to lend those notes of plum apple um and i guess you know um the little bit of spice a little bit of the syrupy body um and that's yeah where we landed with just trial and error trial and error what it's um, all about. And we got to it. I love that you say that kind of about you tasting it, you know, day five, six, seven, because that's exactly what you do with a whiskey as it's coming towards its time ready to be bottled. Because yep. um, people actually don't believe, and you kind of touched on this as well, people don't believe you can over age something or kind of overdo something. <laughs> you really can over mature a whiskey, especially if it's um, a cask with a really kind of distinctive or unique flavor profile you might overpower another kind of more subtle note that you don't want to. Mm -hmm. So it is all about that sampling and testing and making sure you've got it exactly right. Um, and we also do have people at the distillery who do that as well, which is such a dream job, really. Um, but it does, you know, when you're coming closer to the time that whiskey's ready to be bottled, it does go from sampling every month to every week to every day. So it's really interesting that you kind of link between the two. You kind of answered a question there, Mark, and someone asked where the beans roasted in the cask or how did you get the flavour? Yeah. So that was it, yeah, so it was yeah. Green, uh, coffee is in a what we call green form, so mm. it literally is, the, it is green in, uh, by colour. <laughs> um, they're very, very dense, very hard, and that is how they're transported to us um, in green pool bags in the coffee sacks. So yeah. You've probably seen those kind of things in pictures or marketing or anything like that. Um, from there, it is then put into, well, for us, it is a drum roaster. Yeah. Uh, if you imagine a washing machine with a really, with gas fire underneath it. <laughs> um, and basically at that stage it is how much heat are you going to apply to the beans, how long are they going to spend in there. Uh, again, that is just another one of those times it's a much, uh, you know, the roast will take in between 9 and 12 minutes um, for any specific coffee, but you just have to keep, again, you've got what's called a little trier on there where you're just watching and smelling using all your senses uh, to try and make sure that, that your coffee is acting the way you want. Um, alongside that, we have software that we run to chart the curves and what, look at the You're temperature. So, bit of both. Yeah, 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 and again, then that allows the repeatability going forward. I, there's a note come through. Mark, the coffee is sold out. Can I confirm that it's actually gone already? It could well be. <laughs> <laughs> I say it was a small amount, a smaller amount of bags <laughs> available today. There will be more will available be more. from 5 p.m. tomorrow that we will roast and ship to you on Monday. That's unbelievable. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, That's great. Thank you so much. It's got flown out early. That yeah. discount code was that. That just made everybody check through the basket. That was brilliant. Um, did you guys go back to the whiskey? Just out of curiosity. Uh, so I had a little, did you do back, it? Back and forth. I am blown away. The coffee just brings out such an unbelievable undertone to the blackbush. It really is that kind of aniseed licorice flavor that it just enhances, mm -hmm. just brings it right to the forefront of your yep. palate. That is unbelievable. Yep. Please, if you haven't, do it. It's the, sensational. The two of them together are amazing. And anybody who's bought a bag online again. or has some left over, please, please make yourself some demerara syrup and have the two of them together in an Irish coffee because that is going to work so well. Yeah, I think it, it really will. And uh, 
really excited for the, the cocktails we're going to have tonight. They're, uh, now I'm getting amazing. bananas. <laughs> Honestly, that's funny. When you walk into the distillery, the smell that you're hit with is bananas and pears. Um, because of the, the character yeah. of the, yeah, you, you've but you al almost like a sort of like artificial foam banana sweets, yeah, is what like, I always or got like from an it. Or like pie almost as well. Yes, turn together, absolutely. It's just like it's that that's hits you straight away because it's yeah. the character of our kind of our the Bushmills DNA that we mentioned. Yeah. So you're just you've just nailed it, Mark. Just intertwined Great. everything. That's absolutely unbelievable. You mentioned Irish coffee, which brings us in to whiskey cocktails. <laughs> Uh, such a nice, like Mark. That was unbelievable. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah, it's such a such a beautiful coffee. As you said, please do mm -hmm. make. Try it out, trial them, whiskey, coffee, experiment. That's what it's all about. We want you to kind of showcase the versatility of both of these liquids, which is great. So thank you, Mark. Seamus, so I'm going to hand over to you. Absolutely. Before we get right into the um, cocktails themselves, um, obviously, you, I'm sure a lot of people will probably recognise you. You've done a lot of work for us in the past um, on here. You were actually the first person to introduce me to a whiskey espresso martini as well. I think that was how we met in the first place. It was. It yeah. was. Hand, it's handed me an espresso martini with black bush in it and I've never looked back. I've never gone back to vodka. It's unbelievable, and that's where it all started. <laughs> um, so before we kind of get into the cocktails, how, your career, you've been, how long have you been bartending now? About Jeez, so I'm trying to think how, how old I'm, about, about, yeah, about Nearly 12 years, years now, yeah. so that's unbelievable. How did you, so how did you, how did you get into hospitality? How did you get started? Uh, I turned 16 and got a national insurance card, and it was a wee bit more appealing than working with steel and my dad in a cold shed <laughs> in the morning. Um, you know, you, you get phone numbers, you get, you get a pint. Warmth of a bar. Yeah, it was fantastic, the social element. So got into that and fell in love with it. Yeah. Um, went to university, university to study Irish language and picked up a sort of part-time job at the weekends. And it soon became a full-time job and classes became less frequent. And <laughs> I made my choice and here we are. So that was kind of, you know, yeah. when did you, was there kind of a, like a light switch moment where you thought hospitality is what I'm supposed to do, this is where I belong, kind of? Yeah, whenever uh, one of my university lecturers uh, was shouting at me in the morning for not paying attention or doing too good in what I was at, and he came into the, the bar I was working that evening, and he couldn't have been nicer to me because... Your you drinks know, were brilliant. It was, you know, you're, how'd you go, you're doing understand why you're tired in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, I hadn't met Mark yet at that point, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was a turning the point. Coffee hadn't kicked in no, quite at no, that no. stage. It needed, needed you in this life, Mark. That's unbelievable. And you, you have actually worked in quite a lot of really renowned bars across Belfast mm -hmm. as well. And that's kind of how you, you know you built your experience mm -hmm. up to where you are today. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I think it was sort of best time probably up along the North Coast. When yeah. we're, because I suppose where we first met. And, and um, the team we had up there and the sort of the work we did along with Bush Mills and trips to the distillery and events and you know when you brought those global bartenders over mm -hmm. um, is where we learned the most and that's where the, the coffee and whiskey parents sort of came happened. about wasn't it? Yeah I mean you did fantastic you're so humble you did so well like the leading the, the kind of me and Mrs Jones boutique hotel in Port Shirt I'm sure a lot of people on here will know it very well you really did lead that team to a success you won so many awards kind of best bar best hotel bar in Ulster and things like that as well so He's just being humble. It was, yeah. the, the team was class. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, absolutely unbelievable drinks in the North Coast. It was so, so lovely. But um, we're going to get started because mm -hmm. we really want to marry these two liquids together and really show you um, how wonderful liquid they are. So the first drink is going to be coffee at the Coopers. While you kind of get yourself sorted there, obviously we're, we'll kind of chat through as slowly as possible, folks, so you can make it along with us. Um, you're also going to be making one for us as well, which is great. So we're going to get to sample it too. Um, so while you're kind of preparing your glasses, Seamus, so um, coffee at the Coopers, the inspiration for this uh, drink, this cocktail, of course came from Chris and Alistair Keane, which are our two Coopers that we have on site at the distillery. They are father and son, third and fourth generation Coopers, so they have a, 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 a such an incredible experience and length of time with their family history at the distillery. Um, the Cooperage at the distillery is of course repair only. Um, we bring all of our casks in, majority of them second hand barrels, because of course we're relying heavily on the previous <coughs> contents of that cask to influence the flavour profile of our whiskey. So those two will be responsible. We have an awful lot of barrels on site at the distillery. We're over 400,000 casks. Uh, and those, uh, Chris and Alistair, they would be uh, kind of in charge of any repairs for the barrels, any staves, any pieces of wood, or any um, kind of hoops that need replaced on the casks as well. Wonderful guys, they are absolute gentlemen, and when you get them started talking about their craft, they can't stop, a bit like us three, actually. <laughs> um, so just wonderful guys as well. So that's kind of where the inspiration came from. Um, it's just kind of like we're celebrating them and having a little coffee with them, so you take away. So, okay, so again, this is a drink by Chris. Um, the story behind it, the, the sort of how it all operates is fantastic. And having met the, the key and father and son duo myself, um, it's fantastic to pay a bit of homage to them. And um, the work they do is absolutely incredible. And it, 
yeah, the results are right here. <laughs> um, so guys, going to start off with, uh, so this can be a shake and drink, especially, essentially sort of replacing vodka with whiskey for an espresso martini. And um, we're going to serve it over ice in the little rocks glass you have here, as opposed to in the traditional coupe. And um, you're going to notice just how well these two things work together. So take one of your little Blackfish miniatures, 50 mil. I yeah. measured it out here because I want to use a full yeah. bottle and uh, let, hopefully Lauren let me take it home. Um, so yeah. You can pour it, sorry guys, you can pour that right in because you just have a little the bottle of 50 mils already. Pre so just pour yeah, that straight mil. in. Yep. 50 mil, full works in there. You want to do the same amount of liquid off your coffee, which will cool down a little bit here now, all right? So again, another 50 mil of that into preferably a large part of whatever sort of shaker or vessel so you're using. Coffee will be nicely cooled at this stage as well, so it shouldn't yeah, really so melt like the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah it should. I mean, we're yeah. going to do this one first, which is shaking over ice, which will take the temperature yep. down again. The following drink afterwards, the coffee will pretty much look warm. We'll give it a quick yep. stir, it'll be sweet. Perfect. And the little vial of the plum and five spice syrup that Chris has created for you is measured at 30 mil. He did hundreds of these somehow. Um, so yeah, dump that whole thing in again. <laughs> I'm going to measure mine out because we're working with a few. And I, I felt eyes in the back of my head there. I made one drink earlier and you two were raging about it, so we're going to make three here today. Yeah. <laughs> going to get to taste it. I almost forgot there, sorry. And this, you know, the, the syrup has been chosen especially, obviously, because of the, the Blackfish yes. blend as well. It's been heavily so, influenced by that. I mean, somebody sent me a note in earlier saying they got all spice, or five spice yeah. and all spice off this. Um, plum was a big thing that all three of us picked up. So what Chris sort of did was um, he created the drink to highlight those things. You know, you've got... Um, cooked or cooked or sort of stewed plums and um, the flavors that are within the, the elements of the drink the whiskey and the coffee this just highlights and amplifies the two of them yeah and um, it replaces the need for like a for a simple or a demerara syrup in a classic espresso martini or coffee liqueur because the coffee that we're using here today isn't just your standard stuff it's really yeah. really high quality one that, that gives everything you need there so guys i have enough for three in here you one is absolutely plenty. I was um, laughing. There's a, you don't need to put two more measures of blackfish into it. I mean, no judgments, but um, this is for three of us, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you only need one. <laughs> All right, so uh, some of you, I'm sure, will have cocktail shakers at home. If you have a protein shaker, sweet, add everything in there, sealed up, give it a good hard shake. Cocktail shaker, maybe some of you got one for today, haven't used it before. Add your ice in, line up two sides, a little hit up there, that's sealed out. And each side, you're gonna get a good hard shake over your shoulder for a bit of velocity for about six to eight seconds. Um, you'll feel it to get nice and cold, that's when you know you've done your job, alright? So we're going to go with that. Always had another cold point here from doing it. <laughs> it's that sitting down as well, usually you're... It feels unnatural. Does it feel weird? Normally you're yeah. standing dancing about with two or three of your friends running around exactly. behind you. Still, still, yeah, still yeah, yeah, you nailed that, yeah. nailed that. <laughs> so, alright, that tastes absolutely great. Uh, what we want to do now is ice your glass, guys, because again, unlike the classic espresso martini, we're serving this over ice. You'll find that the measurement and a bit of ice in the glass leaves it. Sort of perfectly filled, really nice wash line with a little uh, sort of crema or froth up top. Yep. I don't want to say something wrong in the coffee terminology. Because <laughs> uh, oh, I know you are a bit of a perfectionist. Oh, well, I, I like that. Uh, again, it's a parallel. Yep. Two perfectionists either side of me here. <laughs> <laughs> Masters in their craft. Bartenders and Baristas, I don't know what the proper term is, uh, are really... Roaster. Artisan coffee roasters. Yep. Coffee yeah. fanatics yeah. are not too far apart in many elements. That's actually really true. You know, like barista kind of bartender, you know, it is the skill of creating a drink. I mean, yeah. even, I mean, this is simplifying right down, but the coffee art as well, like that is a skill. Yep. Never mind brewing Without a good cup of coffee. That's, yeah. Mark 100%. was showing me the skills he was using earlier and he was telling me like sort of how in depth and how high tech they were like getting stuff to, to his phone about like, even the velocity of the liquid, how fast No way, um, that's so cool. I've <laughs> never been more jealous. Like, you're an absolute nerd, but I love it. <laughs> um, that's like, how you know you're passionate, Mark. Absolutely. Guys, so really simple little garnish in this drink. Just a little, uh, sorry, nice is what I'm going to use here. Sort of rest it on top because you want to get that nose. It's going to lend itself into the, uh, the sort of spices yeah. coming through from the whiskey, from the coffee, mm -hmm. and the five spice in the, in the plum syrup. Um, I'm going to pass this across to you because yep. I can again feel you burning in the back of my head. <laughs> Me a drink in hand. The smell already, like that yeah. kind of the star and the licorice. Is it's, everything is just complementing itself here. So within the drink, I mean, from the nose alone, you can get the same sort of notes and elements you would do from both the coffee and the whiskey separately. And they're, they're assisting each other. The two of them, you know, I mean, for equal measures, 50 ml of each, and the two of them just lend themselves to each other so well. The syrup is there just to highlight it along with the yep. garnish up top. So. Perfectly balanced. Yes. Cheers. 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 Cheers, guys. I'm just going to go silent again for a few seconds here. Fair play, Chris. Great one. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it's just so much layers of everything. Mm. Like you get everything comes in different little stages. Yeah. I um, mean, you're left with the coffee kind of lingering right through. Uh, it's still that plum, that little. Yeah, I mean, you have that, that the, the sweetness from that from that syrup sort of really yeah. drawn, and then and the aftertaste and holding that a little bit longer too. Yeah. I mean, if you had that menu everywhere, you probably would order an espresso martini again. Yeah, exactly. It is, as you say, the layers, Mark. It's that the, the whiskey hits first, yep. then the coffee, yep. then the syrup, as you say, just kind of like enhances and ties the yep. two the two together. That is unbelievable. That is absolutely beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. The balance of the two spoons as well. Oh my word, beautiful. Yeah. Definitely be sipping on that as, as the night goes on. Um, Seamus, so you're definitely best place to answer this question for us. Mm -hmm. um, why do you think whiskey and coffee work so well together? Whiskey and coffee work fantastic together for many reasons. Um, so the joke and answer that I always give when somebody asks that, but when I want to get away from the conversation, is because bartenders can't function without coffee, and <laughs> coffee guys can't function without a bar at the end of the shift. It's just sort of, <laughs> you know, we, yeah. just, we see you before our day, you yeah. see us after yours, and it just we help each other get through. Yep. Um, but no, there's a lot of the same sort of uh, skills and, and methods within mm -hmm. the whole thing. You know, like you're going right down to what your your weights, your measurements, your your finishes, the the notes and the, the base beans and stuff like that. I mean, within our trade with whiskey and yeah. working with drinks, there's so many similarities. And um, it's all how you affect things, different temperatures and environments and the, the, the amount of care that goes into it. And um, really subtle different notes and changes that the general people might not pick apart, but the person behind it does. Yeah. It gives the final product that's really steps that sets it apart. And um, between establish and back bush, both, uh, yeah. you know, you have those people. Yeah, yeah that's I think that, that is a big thing. Like, you know, sometimes you just say, it's like, when you, I guess that saying of like, you don't want to say how the sausage is made, you don't need to worry about all that stuff, but it, it, it is something that is delivered at the end that it has, you know, eat, and I actually think some of the most amazing things are when you don't understand everything that's went on behind it. Um, I think it's a big thing that we always push the staff. It's like, the staff member might know exactly the altitude and the farm and the process of the bean, but they don't need to give that information yes, to everyone yeah, exactly. that comes in and orders a cup of coffee. But what I always found was, again, once I really started getting into my drinks, if I went for coffee somewhere, I stopped just ordering Americana, I was ordering what filter, what's house, especially then established was the one was like, you know what, I'm just trusting whatever's the house filter today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and just had another conversation with the person behind the counter who, who knew what they were talking about, who had the appreciation for it, not really, not going too in depth, but like, yeah, it just enough ways. that you, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the same, th same thing, like you recognize their faces because whenever I was working bars around close to yourselves, it was the staff that were coming out after shift. Yep. And like, they weren't going to sit away in the corner <laughs> and yeah. like having something simple. They were sitting at the bar. Yeah. And it was usually like an old fashioned, like a whiskey forward cocktail with a lot of different depths and elements to it with the, what they were ordering. So there's a lot of parallels yeah. there beyond the glasses and the beard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And you, you kind of, you've both mentioned really interesting points. Like a slight tweak in an ingredient can make the biggest difference. Absolutely. It's like a few extra mils of sugar syrup will completely we, change we, the drink. We both prefer demerara when working with coffee. Yeah, so demerara definitely. And then, Mark, is it the same for you, Mark, as well? Um, kind of with coffee, you know, a higher percentage, maybe a certain bean or something like that. Could that completely, obviously, it completely alter the flavor? Yeah, I mean, particularly in the, the roasting process, um, you know, that is the big thing where we will always be doing testing uh, different approaches to the roasting mm. itself. Um, and then as well, when you're dialing in a coffee, like that's the point of the scales and the yeah. weights is, you know, especially with espresso, you're kind of going, okay, how many grams of coffee am I starting with? Yeah. How much liquid am I pulling through that? And again, a lot of that is, if we can measure that, then we can repeatedly do the same thing. Like if you're not measuring that, if you're just eyeballing the whiskey in there, if you're just eyeballing the syrup, you, you can't, we can't all be sharing the same drink, whereas yeah, yeah, you're those things have, 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 have been put in place. And uh, yeah, there's no doubt about it that you need a human. Again, taste is king. How's that tasting? How's that tasting? The numbers might not make sense or whatever else is tasting great. Let's let's follow that. Yeah. And there's been even again yourself, you'll know this, the rise in coffee cocktails has been phenomenal. I think the espresso martini was one of the most searched cocktails over lockdown or something like that, because people couldn't figure out how to make it right. I yeah. think that was the thing, wasn't it? <laughs> so quite, it's quite, it's, if you, you know, if you're not obviously an expert, it is quite hard to nail, but I mean, even the, the kind of bars across Ireland and even beyond as well, that have really kind of branded themselves on pairing whiskey with, with the spirit, like I mean, shout out to Dave so Mulligan, so bar 1661. When you said there's two huge examples, both, well, obviously both from here, yeah, on the other side exactly. of the world, but you've got 1661 down in Dublin, which have sort of coined the, the, the Belfast coffee, yeah, um, which is 
was a cold, uh, cold, cold a, coffee. A cold yeah. Irish coffee, essentially, which yeah. is, was Ireland's most signature cocktail at the moment, being replicated in bars up here and down there. Exactly. Um, but the, the biggest one we sort of have to pay homage to today, I guess, is the Dead Rabbits Irish Coffee. Um, Absolutely. The guy, two guys from here, took over a bar, became the world's best cocktail bar. They went to America, opened their own, did the same thing again. Yep. And the drink at the forefront was a Bush Mills Irish coffee that they took like sort of larger, sloppy quantity drink. It was across every bar in the country. Really refined it, perfected it. And um, they do them, I don't know how many, is it hundreds a day or something? It's hundreds, it? it's something. I remember, I did read the exact number. It's hundreds a day. It's, it's, it's like, insane. I yeah. never appreciated just how much work went into doing yeah. that. Each one's perfect until I did a wee event with Gillian, the bar manager. Yeah. Um, I think we put out a hundred and something in five or 10 minutes for like an interval of a, of a show at the Opera House. And like her level of protection was actually going around almost like measuring against her finger the level of cream on them. I love that. But it's, it, you know, you talk about the coffee, it's a perfectionist thing. Yep. And they actually have in the dead, I've been very, very lucky to actually visit the bar a few times. They have a dedicated Irish coffee station. That's how serious they take the Irish coffee. And, the, and it's, they completely revolutionized it. Like yep. Sean and Jack, like hats off to them. Absolutely two Belfast, two Belfast yep. lads as well, which is great, changing, changing the, the scene. Um, have we talked too much again? I think we have. <laughs> We're just a wee bit too. We get to, we do nerd out over this. We do, we definitely do, which we love it, absolutely. Um, Seamus, so we're going to finish off with our second and final cocktail. That's right, I have another drink to mix, sorry. You do? <laughs> Work away. So the second one is going to be um, an old-fashioned coffee. So obviously the old-fashioned as well, again, you're a much better place to speak about this. <coughs> Such an, a really old classic drink. It really, really is. Yeah, so... <coughs> Guys, going back to like sort of the earliest coin turn off a cocktail was 1806, 1608 reversed a wee bit. Um, 1806, <laughs> where it essentially consisted of your spirit, your sugar, and bitters. Um, we're not going to use any like aromatic traditional bitters today. We're going to use the coffee in place because the coffee has that level of sweetness, and as being coffee, has a mild level of bitterness as well. Um, this drink is just going to really, really be interesting. Um, the first time I read it, I thought, Chris, you're a bit mental here, but it, it worked really well. Um, <laughs> I'm going to remember to make three instead of one this time. <laughs> so, uh, we're still looking at you. You want, you want to use your coffee first because you're going to, it's going to still be slightly lukewarm and you're going to dissolve the sugar into the coffee. So this, instead of being shaken, will be a stirred drink. If you clean up your cafeteria, perfect. If not, the tin shaker, even in the glass can work. So uh, 50 ml of the coffee per drink. I've got a treble to do here because... Once again, folks, you just need the one, crack open one bottle of Black Bush and you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Your third and final. <laughs> All right, so I've got, uh, I'm going to do three. So again, 50 ml per serve of the coffee. Um, you're looking at about a sachet's worth of brown sugar. But again, we talked touched on this earlier. Um, try things without first, et cetera. If you don't like, if you're not such a sweet tooth, yep. don't use as much. So for example, if someone didn't have the bar spoon, would a tablespoon be suffice so or a little bit a more? a bar spoon generally should be about a teaspoon about or a slightly teaspoon. less. So a sachet, yep. generally a sachet is five grams, which is a teaspoon. Perfect. Um, if you're somebody who's not as big a fan of sweetness, yep. go for like half a sachet, try that. And yep. you know what, you can always add more and restir it if you need. I have a very sweet tooth, so I always fill sachet. So I'm going to give that a little stir just to dissolve the sugar into the coffee while it's still somewhat warm. All right, so now you've got 50 ml of coffee with your sugar dissolved into it. Add your little small measure of black fish, which is 50 ml. Again, I'm going to do three. I'm not being greedy. I'm making drinks for all of us. <laughs> and you'll be a little bit faster than I am, I'm sure. And at this point, guys, what you want to do is add a good handful of ice. Because you're going to stir this drink over ice for a little bit of the chill factor and a bit of dilution. Yeah, so this isn't shaken. This is stirred. Yeah. That's definitely a James so Bond again, line, isn't you're, it? You're not trying to, to, yes. to whip, air, whip air into it the same way you would do with, uh, with the shake. Um, this, this drink, you'll find, will have a very different texture in the overall, in the end up. And I'll grab three of these old glasses. Perfect. All right, so you want to give it a wee stir, guys. Generally, for an old-fashioned, traditionally, 20 to 30 seconds, most people sort of go by. And um, since this had the dilution element from the coffee already, as opposed to the classic one. Um, five or six seconds should be good there. It's a great color, isn't it? Yeah, it looks apart then. It from does. preview taste, it is great. <laughs> um, I'm not going to be waiting too long. Please don't. All right, so we're going to serve this in the rocks glass over ice again. To try and strain off any water that might be in your little ice bowl or bucket or whatever you're using. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the kind of old, fashioned cocktail has such a, as you already mentioned, kind of a really interesting history. 
quite a lot of debate about the origins of it as well. Um, but it actually didn't even used to be made with whiskey or bourbon. It was mainly rum or gin it was actually made with. Um, it kept its name. So when the kind of the drink, the, the concept of it was brought to um, the likes of New York and it kind of reached a wider audience, um, people started using bourbon as a base or, or whiskey. Um, it kept its name, however, because of people asking for a cocktail in an old fashioned way which basically meant um, the spirit, sugars, and bitters. That's essentially how that came yeah, about. Yeah, and I mean, Irish whiskey was the biggest spirit in the world. It was a predominant exactly. one asked for in everything pre-prohibition. Yep. Um, thank you for that, America. But we're on the <laughs> way back up here now, um, and um, bourbon sort of took over that gap yeah, in the market. Exactly. Kind of a bit of moon, uh, moonshine and bootlegged. But Irish whiskey, is my, well, black whiskey was always my go-to for an old-fashioned, and the fact that it's a whiskey that, you know, it's it's at the right price point, it has a backbone, it stands up to itself, um, it's just so different from anything else, and that sort of that little gap in the market, it has absolutely dominated it for years. Um, so guys, with this drink, you want to get a little orange peel. Um, a knife, or even a fruit or vegetable peeler, is great. You just want to peel a bit of the orange, so you're not getting too much of the white pith in behind. And, I mean, if you want to get all fancy and cut it into nice shapes, and swans, and everything else, by all means, <laughs> go for it, but... Uh, orange art. We're, <laughs> we're just going to get the sort of pretty simple with it here because it all has the same aroma and same taste. So with each drink, what you want to do is you have the orange peel, just sort of rub the back end of it, like around the side of the glass, so you get the oils expressed across there. Um, and that's going to influence the aroma and the flavour of the final drink. I'll pass one on across the orange. Well, thank you. Please let it make its way across to Mark. It will. <laughs> it will. And yours is coming right now. There Smell. you go. Thank you. I just love the zestiness that, it's you know, it's beautiful, beautiful yeah. isn't it? That first sip. That is your old fashioned coffee. Cheers, guys. We'll let you finish off there. Thank there you. I appreciate are. that. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Cheers, guys. Cheers. Oh, <laughs> I don't think you could reach over that far. So, like, compared to like, this traditional wow. old fashioned, it's, it's a bit more approachable in the fact that it's not as, as high ABV. Mm -hmm. so yes, that's the extra dilution from stretching it out with that, with the coffee and the water content in there. Um, the coffee element blends into the whiskey so nicely there. Yeah. Um, the orange really brings out a brightness, that, that those more fruity notes. Mm -hmm. oh, I think it's all around an absolutely fantastic drink. It's so interesting as well, because I think you know when you drink an old fashioned, you're obviously not expecting the coffee. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice little surprise. Yeah, even when the, you have the a sip. color wouldn't lead you to believe that no, it's coffee. No, not, not at, at all. Not I think really plays with your mind as well, yeah. because and it does, and the coffee just kind of yeah. you, and but it marries so well with it. I think it's. Co coffee, okay. orange, chocolate, those sort of elements always work together traditionally in different different things. So uh, this is that drinks a cracker. Awesome. Again, Chris, fair play for yes, a second. Cheers, one. cheers, cheers. Absolutely beautiful. This is it. Mm, beautiful. They're both and they're both so different as well. Like completely yeah. different drinks. Um, there was a question came in there. Sorry guys, I just noticed it popped through when you were making your cocktail. Um, what's the recipe for the syrup? We will be sending through um recipes for both of these drinks methods and also how to make the um the syrup as well so don't worry i will also remind you i was going to say remind you of the discount code but the coffee's gone <laughs> 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 but there'll be more it's fine there'll be more and um, there's there's another question coming in here mark i think this is going to be directed no it's actually directed to me uh, <laughs> i can see it coming through here it says would it be very naughty or considered wasteful to use a 12 year old in these cocktails no, I'm going to go on a rant here. <laughs> Hear me out. And Let's actually, the, whoever asked this question, thank you, because they asked. <laughs> Basically, if you want a great meal, if you want to cook yourself a really nice dinner, what do you do? You use brilliant ingredients. If you want a great drink, a great cocktail, you use a great spirit as a base. So my personal view is how you enjoy whiskey that's absolutely fine. If that's how you enjoy to drink it, absolutely. Um, we have used our 10-year-old single malt um, in cocktails before, so the 12-year-old, absolutely. Um, the 12-year-old, I'm assuming you mean the distillery reserve, so again, it's a sherry-based uh, whiskey, aged in sherry casks. Um, someone's just said 21-year-old as well. Okay, maybe a little <laughs> bit far, <laughs> Ch chancing the arm there, but the 12-year, 100% um, go for it, absolutely. We're with, with whiskey, the likes of Black Bush and Bush Mills in general, we're always trying to push the boundaries and kind of break the glass ceiling of how we think whiskey should be enjoyed. Absolutely, I'm all for that. Um, whiskey cocktails, that's what's 
massively led to the rise in the younger generation, the younger wave of people drinking whiskey is through the means of cocktails, through classics like old fashions, whiskey sours and the like. So absolutely, I actually compare it to coffee because I always say don't let anyone tell you you don't enjoy whiskey just because you don't drink it neat. You wouldn't tell someone they didn't like coffee if they didn't drink black coffee. That's right. So okay. it's the same principle. There we are. There's on parallels all over the place yeah. here. <laughs> on the 12-year-old on the yeah. uh, cocktail, remember like you gave us guys in Port Stewart a, bo a bottle for the bar? I did. But then in, in person, I sort of messaged I did. Front. <laughs> and I'm not, obviously, we drank a lot of that straight together behind so the bar. Did, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, if you think that for an old-fashioned, mm -hmm. it's a fantastic whiskey. Yeah. Um, again, you want to keep it as a sort of spirit-forward cocktail. Yep. Say, for example, like a one-to-one -one demerara syrup, so you work about five mil of that. Stir it over ice with 50 ml of the of the whiskey and two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. Stir that for 20 seconds, and you have an amazing you've used an amazing spirit to make a great cocktail that really showcases the spirit itself. That's definitely want to try. Exactly. Even a Manhattan or something like that as well, like yeah. something re like really kind just of spirit. The, the, the sherry and the sweet vermouth just work together. Spirit led, exactly. There is actually a funny story. Just when someone mentioned the 21 year old, I remember. Mm. So j just to let you know that it has been done before, not by me <laughs> personally. I, when I worked in the distillery, um, there was a, a man came up to me and told me that his, was it 80, fa 80 year old dad made hot whiskies with the 21 year? Definitely a rich American, wasn't he? <laughs> no, no, but um, yeah, I think, I think he cried. I think his dad actually cried when he saw the, the beautiful nature of the whiskey when it was actually eaten and enjoyed neat. Uh, yep. Definitely enjoy the 21 year old neat, I will say that. <laughs> when a whiskey's been in a cask for that long, you do want to savour all the depth, uh, of course, of the of the spirit. Um, you had a really interesting question from Mark earlier on as well about the French press. I did, that was in the nerd night thing. <laughs> I think he, he that might actually be of benefit to someone at home wondering kind yeah. of why we don't yeah, press so the Yeah, so really with, with regards to the French press um, and using the sort of different technique, uh, it's a really great technique when you've got that extra bit of time um, and we'd always say, just take that little bit of extra time, um, and it kind of really super no fuss way. Yeah. Um, but really, when you've got a French press, um, and when you push the plunger through, um, you are then agitating the coffee again, um, and there are particularly lots of fine particles of ground coffee in that brew that will, okay, the, the, the majority of the sediment might stay at the bottom, but it's particularly those fine ones that will kick up through the brew. And they are what will lead to a bitterness and over an astringency um, with the brew because it just leads to over extracting those, just pulling far too much out of them. Um, and so, yeah, we just kind of try and let it settle and then do as little as you can to disturb that coffee bed at the very bottom. Um, so then, yeah, just that becomes the no plunge method. And uh, thanks yep. to uh, quite a famous almost YouTuber at this point, a guy called James Hoffman, uh, for kind of coming up with that technique and um, popularizing it. I love that. You're always drawing inspiration from, so that's the thing, you can never learn too much about things like this. You know, you're always constantly learning and finding new methods and tricks and things like that as well. But I mean, those drinks were unbelievable. I think just it's the, the collaboration as well has, is so relevant because I think the, the coffee culture kind of influence, people meet over a coffee, they kind of catch up over a coffee and they do the same with a drink. And I think that influence has really kind of given that rise to coffee based Cocktails. Absolutely, and the fact like, even you said meeting up for a coffee with a friend. Exactly. Like, times I've done that, and like we drank two coffees, can't sit here any longer. We're taking a load of space. We'll go to the bar for a wee whiskey. Yep. Exactly. Easy. So it's all links together. Absolutely. Really, it's, it, there's so many hands that come into making each beverage as well, making each drink, and eat from a farm, you know, to a cup to a glass, you know, and and without those all those different hands and all those different people that are coming in along the way it just doesn't work take any of them out and it just exactly. it fails to happen so um yeah it's that's what we always are thankful for the people at the start of the chain and the customers at the end of the chain and absolutely um folks i think we're nearing the end of our event which is really sad because this has been brilliant um if there are any more questions please do put them in the chat before we leave you um i still have it in front of me here so i will I've just noticed one. <laughs> That's great timing. Um, will there be a recording? Yes, there absolutely will. Um, keep an eye on YouTube. All will be available on YouTube next week. So Bushmills Ireland, of course, we will update you always at anything that we do and anything that's happening on our channels. So absolutely, the event has been recorded. Um, so you will be able to watch that back at your leisure at any time. So absolutely, you'll be able to catch it. You can join us for a drink all over again uh, in, a, in a few weeks, which is brilliant. Um, I'll keep a closer eye on this, guys, over the next couple of minutes. Uh, just while we kind of wrap up, 
there's another one's coming. <laughs> I can't even can't get a sentence finished. The mugs. Can we buy the mugs? The little established ones. Established ones are available. Established on our ones website. are available. These ones, uh, someone else is going to have to answer that. They will be. Out. Do believe they will be available soon. Again, keep your eyes out on our social channels. We'll update you on that. We can maybe drop a few into you, Mark, as well. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And of course, the Black Bush Blend is also will be when you have a couple more bags available back. next yeah, week. Yeah, as I say, uh, we generally speaking have a, a system where if you order the coffee uh, today, it'll be shipped tomorrow. So uh, we don't want to keep take, take orders today and not be able to <coughs> ship them until Monday. So uh, come 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, more coffee will be made available and it will be roasted and posted on Monday. Hosted roasted and, and posted. posted. I, I love that. That is what a, what a line to end on. We just, we'll just end it yeah, there. That, <laughs> roasted that, and that's posted. <laughs> that's the tagline when you share this to your. Uh, yeah. Yes, socials. absolutely. Yeah. Roasted and posted for sure. Um, everyone, first of all, thank you so, so much for joining us. Um, I've absolutely loved this event and having these two beside me, so I really hope you have as well. Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much um, for making an incredible blend and just bringing your expertise and your knowledge to us. It's been so, so interesting. I've really loved having you, so thank you so much. Seamus, so thank you for being our absolute saviour of the day and stepping in and making some beautiful whiskey cocktails, which I hope you loved, and I certainly hope you recreate them um, for many, many weeks to come at the weekends with your friends. We will, as I said, be sharing um, all recipes, all ingredients and methods uh, tomorrow in an email, as well as that little discount code. As Mark has said, there will be more coffee hopefully available in uh, the next week or so. Don't want to yep. put a timestamp on that, but soon. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. As always, again, um, we love to hear any feedback. We love to see your, your cocktails, anything uh, about the event. So do tag us or handle it once again is at Bushmills IRL and the hashtag is Blackbush Story. So we'll have a little read of those after when we finish up. Now, before I let you go, I'm going to round off with a toast. You know that I cannot finish <coughs> any tasting without a toast. Um, it just brings us all together, just like whiskey and coffee. Uh, and just thanks you all for, for joining us. So thank you so, so much, everyone. I want you all to raise your glasses. Here's to the wild, here's to the free, here's to you and here's to me. Here's to those that quietly do, this Bushmills moment goes to you. Cheers, Slauncha. Cheers. Thank you, everyone. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Cheers. Thank you.